I didn't um not prepared at all for this. I just com- it completely. <laughs> oh right, <laughs> it's gonna be one of these. Okay, yeah. off the cuff. Okay. Yeah, I think so. I've, I've got a few <laughs> things off my head I can kind of just bring up. But yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, no, sure. I'm not sure if uh, Louis and Mark are gonna gonna join. Should I should what I probably do an intro? Louis and Mark. <laughs> Sorry, Louis and Will. Are bloody <laughs> I'm like all over the place today. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Not only do we look alike, but we sound alike as well. <laughs> yeah. Wow, wow Alex, thanks. What I'll do, I'll just do the intro anyway, and then yeah, sure, sure. Um, if they if they make cameos, then they make cameos. But right. but for listeners, this is going to be a he'll, he'll miss episode. But it's going to be a absolute shit show. <laughs> For those of you new to the What The Flip podcast, we dive into hilariously interesting and explicit conversations around anime, games, comic movies, mysteries, and all the sexiness of geek culture. With that said, get ready, because I'm Alex. I'm Will. (laughs) And you're listening (laughs) to What The Flip. Let's go. (laughs) In case you didn't know, it's Marky Mark. <laughs> oh shit! This whole time, just like cussing Mark for ages. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit! Just rinsing myself. Oh. How you been, man? How you been? Yeah, all good, all good. I I originally wanted to do um, I had a topic, and I feel like I I need to do it on that as a as a whole episode rather than part of it off the cuff. Okay. But it's based on a comment that I made on i'm not sure if i told you guys a comment i made on youtube on a youtube channel and i'll no. just tell you the premise oh, i'll just tell okay, you the premise right. of it and yeah. then but i'm gonna save it for another episode oh, so right, it's a okay, bit of a tease okay. yeah so um you know i was watching a you know those kind of podcasts where it's like date dating podcast shows where there's guys there and they they invite like a bunch of girls to the podcast oh and then, yeah, yeah 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 and, and they're then, always talking about right. like high value men and, and all of this stuff yes, and what they yes. want and, yeah 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 and I, I'm, I'm, I find them really interesting so I was like watching one and um, a lot of them have this theme in common about you know high value men they, right. they have multiple women because it's it's hard to it's hard for a man to sleep with one woman so when a man sleeps with many women it means right. that he should gain respect and a lot of the men are saying these on the show, like the hosts and podcasts and stuff. And, you know, I, I disagree with that. But so anyway, I, I, I made a comment on YouTube um, okay. on, the, on the channel. Mm-hmm. And um, let me, do you want me, should I just tell you what the comment is that I said? Uh, yeah, go for it. I just said. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, it's not the comment it. that's the main thing. It's more, it's more <laughs> of right, the, okay. the respons- <laughs> response. Right, okay. All right. 581 um, interactions. Really? Um yeah, it's a lot. Um, so anyway, I said, call me stupid or silly, but a man who sleeps with loads of women isn't a quote unquote real man or is something that should be celebrated. A real man is one who understands his responsibility, understands how to take accountability, that provides and protects for his family and helps raise the children that he has with his wife. That is what a real man is in my eyes. That's what I put, right? Okay, I don't see anything... And- <laughs> I, I personally think that. that's quite a nice, uh, truthful statement that I put right. out. <laughs> As if I'm calling um, you like a simp or something. Yeah, so I got people saying that I was, I'm, I'm saying that because I'm ugly and I can't get women. They were saying that because <laughs> I'm a simp and I've got low testosterone. Oh my god. Um, but I, I want to kind of go through the interactions with them um, and tell you like my comebacks. Some of them think oh, they, they don't, okay. they right. don't realize that I'm. I'm a decent looking guy. I've got, I've been married, been with my wife for like 16 years right. with two kids and I'm doing pretty well for myself financially. Right. So they don't, they don't, they don't know these things. So they just think I'm just like, I don't know, this, this dirty old, like basement dweller guy. That's, that's simp. That's <laughs> keyboard, like, keyboard warrior. Like, yeah, kind of thing. Simp type. Oh, that's interesting. But yeah, I get, I get into some quite interesting thing, but I think it will be good if we have Louis on the show because I think Louis will have strong opinions on certain things <laughs> and then hopefully me and you could, me and you could argue <laughs> about it. <laughs> oh man i mean yeah i have seen i don't i haven't really sat down and watched the gym but i've watched like clips like like andrew tate and stuff he used to do stuff like that yeah thing. yeah and um and, and the thing is a lot of what the these people say i, I mean i'd i rather i rather save this for another episode so let's just wrap, wrap this topic up but a lot of what right, they say right. is I agree with, but then there's there's another aspect of it that I think is a bit too extreme. 
um and i i, I don't agree but anyway let's 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 save that for for, for a rainy day because <laughs> i think you're gonna laugh at some of the comments that people said yeah no it'd be interesting <laughs> to watch so yeah i've i've seen some of these things like there was a lot i, I just have to select a few because i can't go through like 600 different things um but yeah no um off the cuff today um i haven't really got any topics i mean there was um a few like really small things that we can quickly go through that just out of the top of my mind that i've heard like in the last week but um, um yeah go for it one was uh, i just want to get your reactions one was yeah. um uh how fast fast x the latest and last one or whatever okay how um, how fast yeah uh, you know fast fast and furious yeah 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 fast the latest film um i've said yeah michelle rodriguez has been interviewed and she said something along the lines of like the ending is so surprising and shocking that when i finally watched the film myself i was just like oh my god wow i can't believe you guys have we've done this this is crazy uh, and she was just hyping up something to do about the very end of the film of fast 10 going into 11 i think so yeah yeah fast x i think it's called fast x not yeah, fast yeah, 10 yeah. Like, officially but yeah right. fast 10 um she was just saying that and um oh, no, i saw, I saw a youtube video that. on it and i'm just like what could they what could they possibly do that could I make her say something i try and bring back brian i think they're gonna, <laughs> what, I think they're gonna no i think What's they're that? gonna deep, i think they're gonna deep fake him maybe really what for, like I don't know. I know. I don't. I wouldn't know. I don't think they would go that far, would they? That'd be quite disrespectful. It, um, it, but yeah, I don't put it, it past them. Like they br they brought back so many different characters. I know you mentioned as going into potential spoilers, but I know you mentioned something about Gal Gadot. Yeah, all coming back. <laughs> she went through the the Lazarus pit. And it's just like. After what happened with like Han and stuff, where you just thought, yeah, there's no way this. How on earth are they going to bring this guy back? And even when yeah. they didn't explain it, it was still stupid. And I was just like, as much as I love Far the Fast franchise, I was like, nah, this is just that. <laughs> yeah, just, he's stupid now. So I would not put it past them. I I I generally don't know but what no, it could yeah. be. I don't think it's like a spectacle. I don't think it's like, oh, they're going to Mars or something stupid like that. I think it's something to do with the characters, you're right, because that's like the emotional tug, isn't it? Yeah, like seeing... I feel like that would be the only thing. But the only only character that would really make me hype for the next one is seeing The Rock come back, Hobbs. I don't know, I but he's not he's not it. coming he's not gonna he's come back. No, he's, he's completely gone. Yeah, he's totally fallen out with, with Vin Diesel. Unless it's all just smoke and smoke and mirrors and then they're actually they are trying to do like yeah. a surprise. Did you see like, the latest trailer, by the way? I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how fat Jason Momoa has randomly got. <laughs> yeah. He's just running. He's definitely got... not in Aquaman shape, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, all right, he's uh, done with Aquaman. Lobo shape, though. <laughs> Maybe. He needs to bulk up a bit. But <laughs> well, yeah, he, I mean, he's Lobo shape. <laughs> he's just fat. He's just fat. <laughs> well, I just thought, I just, as soon as I saw it, and I was just like, oh, come on. It's another, like... Yeah. Oh, you the thing is, he, he family or something like that. I'm gonna attack he's your a cool family. villain. Like, um, I mean, he, I mean, I think Jason Momoa is he's, he's a cool person to play a villain. Like, I remember Bullet to the Head with Sly Stallone. Yeah. Oh, yeah, um, that was decent. And I thought he was awesome in that. Yeah, as a villain. yeah, yeah. But he yeah, was he was it. fit and nimble. You know, he wasn't he wasn't like <laughs> overweight, <laughs> inflated, Shub, he had a leg <laughs> inflammation leg everywhere. In a leopard print shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Are you excited for it? No, so my enthusiasm has died after the ninth one. I was just after like, six, oh, and... yeah, after six, it just progressively got worse and worse. And now I'm just like, I'm gonna yeah. watch it, but I'll probably watch it for the sake of recording little clips on my phone and then sharing it to Louis about how good Dom is <laughs> as a character. Like that's because he hasn't seen any of them. So well, I was just like, I just didn't know if it because you know that he does the usual thing where he saves someone with a car. Yeah, I was like. Sure, they've just reused the same shots from <laughs> the sixth, the sixth spawn, isn't it? Like when he only he saves Letty by jumping off, 
He jumps off the bridge in the <laughs> yeah, car. Say... <laughs> I'm sure I was like, I swear they've just, just changed. Used... They just changed the hue and saturation of the of the yeah, color grading. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they just literally just sh- sh- used the same um, VFX shots and just like you know put a building in the back or something, <laughs> added an extra tree just to make it look like <laughs> different <laughs> extra tree. <laughs> Just they just, like they just flip getting... the image. They flip yeah, the image. It's just, it's just it's... getting a bit lazy now. I'm just, it's just. I, 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 I feel no, like they've, they've lost their, they've lost the seriousness of it. Like I think it was good before yeah, because it had it was it was wacky and weird, but there was a there was heart. It had a lot of heart to it. Yeah, there was a funness to it. Yeah, that and now it's enjoyable. just like let's just ramp up the the extreme, and then let's. There's no heart. The car- everything is very surface level. The script yeah, is yeah. just basic. It's just like it, it's, just, it's. They've just lost it, and I, I feel yeah. like Dom. It's just a parody of himself it's now. Been it's been enough, just, man. Let him have a just, let him have a nap. Like, it was just like, come on, bro. Like he's got no weaknesses. Like the guy, you know when he again spoiler. Sorry if any of you haven't seen the night, but when you know when he literally pulls down the. Is it a tower or something? And he's he gets he wraps oh, his arm. Oh, what? He's in that chains. like like he's, he's in flipping... that like giant well or yeah yeah. And he, like, he's flipping Hercules or something. <laughs> and he's flying like oh, eight God. trained soldiers, <laughs> and he's got no skills. <laughs> you and make... he somehow <laughs> he ran a petrol station cafe, <laughs> ran a garage. <laughs> <laughs> like, how are you doing this? <laughs> this makes no sense. Oh God. Oh, I don't know. He tapped That's... into that. He tapped into that. That part. Black Rage, basically. Yeah. <laughs> it's just apparently oh, no, it's just so silly. So so apparently silly. Talk, talking of the Rock, um, right. Zachary Levi from Shazam. He's uh, you know on his interviews of Shazam two. He, right. I think he came out and said they were planning to have the Rock in Shazam two. Oh, I read um, about this, but the Rock said but, no. He didn't want. Yeah, to... because I think he didn't want to be second fiddle to another character. He wanted to be like his own spotlight character kind of thing. Yeah, from what I read a few little more comments and I think he said I think it was something about one is ego and that he didn't want to yeah. be a, a villain. Yeah. He wanted very much to be a a hero. And again, I always defer to you in terms of like D C knowledge and things like that. So I don't know. He's not a hero. About... Yeah, I know what you said about you told me about Black Adam in the sense that he's not a complete villain, but if it, he just acts in defense of his, he's, he's like Namor, his country, in the sense that, right? that he's it's nation or something. Yeah, like his his country and nation come okay. first. So if aliens were invaded in the world, right? If it affected his country, he would stop the get aliens. involved. If it right. didn't really affect him and it didn't have any right. you know, negative effects on him or right. his people, he wouldn't care. Right. Right. And that's kind of like Namor, right? He's like he's all about his city, his his people. Yeah. Um. So he's not necessarily a villain. I guess it's just through the lens in which who's telling the story. Yeah. But I just thought, yeah, it was disappointing because you just think, and then it's kind of blown up in his. Well, it's not only impacted Shazam, which I'm hearing is is pretty much a complete flop, isn't it? It's flopped to be. Apparently, bad. it's a, it's a financial flop, but it's actually a lot of people say the film's actually quite fun. Really, I mean to be honest, yeah. I didn't feel that about the first one. Uh, obviously, financially, it did a lot. It did better than this one. Yeah, I did feel when I watched it, I was like, oh, it's actually got quite a lot of heart to it. Like it's not. Yeah, like, uh, there, there was one scene that that I I thought was really good with um when he when he when Billy meets his mum, and is like in the in a corridor, and he's like knocks on her front door, and she opens, and they have that conversation. And it's kind of like she still doesn't really want him, but she's just like, yeah, you can YouTube it. It's a really good scene. Yeah, I thought I'll that was like it. a really hard to watch scene. Yeah, I'd have to rewatch it because I can't, I can't remember. Uh, well, yeah. It's always a worrying thing when you can't really remember that much of the film. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I just feel like, again, missed opportunities, man. Like, I think, I think a lot of people are saying with Shazam is that he's meant to be a kid as uh, Billy. And then really? when he turns into Shazam, he's got like the the wisdom of Solomon and all of this. So he's meant right. to be like more of a man. But in this is like the kid still Billy acting is the mature like run. And uh, then when right. he turns into Shazam, he's more of the kid. 
So they okay. kind of swapped it around for, I think for humor sake, by a lot of people like, I think that was one of the criticisms that I heard from people. But, um, yeah, I'm still going to watch it. Yeah. I mean, have you been here in an episode? I think you mentioned it. You mentioned just about it anyway. But, um, yeah, is it Tom Cruise getting a little glimpse at watching The Flash? Oh, yeah. And yeah, how he, he was, yeah. like, bigging it up and being like, what the world needs right now. Or whatever that, whatever yeah, what that means. A, ra- a rapist, a rapist superhero. <laughs> it's what the world needs right now. What the world needs right now. Woman like, beating psychotic uh, Scientology or something. <laughs> <laughs> Just a Scientology recruitment video or something. <laughs> yeah, no, um, he, he, he watched it, he loved it, and he, he called up the, the director and was like, I, oh, I love your film and everything like that, and, and all this stuff. Um, Interesting. I, I'm really curious to, to, to watch it. Because James Gunn said some like similar stuff, um, I think some other couple of other people said similar stuff about the Flash. Saying how it's so good, it's like the one of the you no know, top like comic type of movies, like, or top something. ways to do a superhero movie and stuff like that. And um, I'm really curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's just it's just a shame what's happened with that like, Ezra and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, because yeah, obviously to get Keaton back in the in the bat suit is awesome. Do you- do you find it easy to separate artist from the art from the artist, or um, do you, is it a case to case basis? Case to case. Oh, for I me, suppose. like for example, for like, Chris Brown, like I can easily separate it. But I think with people like, say, Kevin Spacey, for example, like, yeah, it'd be quite hard to separate it. And I don't know why it's different for different celebrities. Yeah, I guess it's. I was going to say is I think it depends on how much of a fan you are of the actor or the uh, right, yeah, or the. The person in question, I suppose. Um, with Ezra, pretty different about him. I think he's been right in. <laughs> he's been alright in films I've seen. It's a bit annoying in the Justice League, so it didn't yeah. bother me. Like I was, you were sitting back and reading the stories and being like, "Oh sh- shit, like, yeah. this guy's crazy, man. He needs serious help." Um, but at the same time, you're like, oh, man, I really wanted to see like Flashpoint Paradox like, played out. Yeah. There. In an actual live action movie, would have been sick, and then Keaton coming on board, and what that would have meant for the for the DCU and stuff. Oh, you know what? I'm not going to see it in the cinema, but if I was to see it in the cinema, I would just love to see that moment when Keaton comes in, just to see everyone's reaction. Yeah, I mean they they spoiled it already, so yeah, I kind of well we you, knew he was yeah. in it anyway, but like yeah, yeah they spoiled that you moment. You kind of get why they did it because they obviously probably back off the back of. Edge was craziness. They wanted to. Yeah. They needed. They needed to get bums on seats, especially our, especially considering how much they've spent on this movie. Uh, they needed that pull, but it would have been a shame. I wish it would have been like a the Spider Man moment where it was. It was yeah. like, is, are they in it? Is you know, like and then yeah. when, as soon as you and saw Garfield. like Garfield yeah. and Maguire, it was just like, oh shit. Yeah, like, that was yes. sick. That was, that was like, so sick. So 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 brilliant. I love those moments in cinemas where it's just like, you, you just the whole audience would just go mental. Yeah, you can hear the gasps behind you, so around good. you, and it's like, or like, <laughs> or you know, like with like Charlie Cox in in Spider Man as well. Yeah, then it when <laughs> Matt Murdock t- pops up, I'm just like, oh my god, isn't that? You know what that was a really, I really enjoyed that Spider Man film. Oh, it was great. It really. was great. I know, I know, it was like it was a lot of fan service, but it was. It was good. Like the actual film was good. Yeah, I liked but what, it. I don't see what's wrong with that now. It's like oh, yeah. It's like oh, the fan service. What do you want? What do you, <laughs> yeah, what do you want? want? Do you want to just come out being like super disappointed and just be like, oh, that was shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what what mean? do you want? Um, I'm mean, speaking of like Marvel and MCU. Have you been hearing about uh, what was her name? There was an executive to do with, that was part of Marvel. Oh, she quite, was fired, right? Quite senior, and they let her go um, because I don't know. I've been hearing a lot of things. Apparently, she was uh, she's been quite active in terms of pushing the whole MCU, and right? The whole representation thing, which is really the whole wokeness thing that's kind of plagued phase phase four essentially, yeah. which has kind of resulted in a lot of flops. For, for the MCU and it's why Iger is kind of people are shitting themselves now because he's wielding the axe basically 
and he yeah. wants to get the MCU back on track, which I think is a good thing. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think you need diversity and stuff like that, and you need you yeah, know, nothing female, wrong with that. Female, str- strong female figures, but right. I don't think it, I think they they were saturating it to the point where it's like you're losing your core audience. Yeah, exactly. exactly. As each film came out, it's like you yeah. lost a little bit more, lost a little bit more, and now we're in this like very dead. Like I'm not excited for the next. I'm not excited to see. No, I'm not. I'm, no. I'm not even that excited to see like anything. No, there's nothing. Um, I think the... it was after Doctor Strange two, and Spider Man. After those two, are like the next ones. On. Uh, yeah, it just fell off so so quickly. I was like, you know, what? I don't care anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I mean, I mean, we picked, we touched on it on a, on a previous pod, uh, <laughs> podcast where we we talked about can Marvel get back its its shine its its kind of excitement for it wow. um and i just can't see it unless they bring back a i think losing like you, i think you said before losing that heart in cap and tony it's, it's losing it's losing it's kind of killed it man there's like yeah it's, it's losing it's losing the the heart but it's also Don't losing the story no one every film is a bit too standalone like it's all set in the same universe but there's nothing right. connects and so you're not building up to anything you don't feel like you're building up to anything yeah and you're like okay so thor that was a terrible movie the latest thor yeah what's what's coming out from that and then the next movie that comes out you're like okay but what's the story i don't understand this is a different thing like nothing's connected there's no like under th- you know like before phase one, two, yeah, three, there was underlying Thanos tones throughout. Yeah, yeah. and you were so, um, so excited for it. And yeah. Just... yeah, I don't know. And there's no leader. There's no leader anymore. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I'd be interested to see if they can write the ship. <laughs> um, I think the 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 people were talking about this executive because not only was she LGBTQ, but she was also uh, Latina. I believe. Um, so they were thinking, oh, maybe she's untouchable because you don't want to, A, you don't want to fire a woman. You don't want to be someone, fire someone yeah. who's LGBTQ and you don't want to fire like a uh, minority. Minority, sorry. Um, but she got canned. So now people are like, oh, are they actually going to do this now? Are we finally going to see like proper mcu come they, back they need to they need to start because dc's coming yeah, up and there's, money, a, there's a there's a potential for dc to start taking the the top top seat with james because you know james gunn his team are they everything they do is a, is a success right regardless of how you think about him owning dc everything he does is a success so yeah i'm just going to give it to him give him the benefit of the doubt that you know he really wants to do what he's doing and he's working with some of the top IPs, apart from Spider Man, he's working with Superman and Batman in that universe. So it's like he's he's got thoughts and whatever he's gonna do, I'm just gonna say, look, I might you know, Man of Steel might be my my top, you know, top Superman film and, and Cavill be my top Superman guy, but um I'm still excited. I'm actually excited for DC. Um just because of the leadership right now. So Marvel have to start thinking about it, thinking about, okay, we need to start changing direction and Kind of going back to the old ways, right. keep the team of of heroes to like no more than ten, and then just focus on those stories. Don't start doing like I don't think they need to do Moon Martin, Moon Knight, and Miss Mar um, Kamala Khan, and and introduce like um, Photon and like there's injured so it's too many people. Uh, just keep it, keep it like the like a core ten people. Like Shang Chi was was awesome addition. I like keep him. Yeah. Um. I'm, sorry, I'm not saying that chuck them away, but I'm just saying what they should have done is just like not expand it so quickly so much with all these different characters. Like just keep it very tight still so you can really develop and have a, uh, a intimacy with the characters that you're watching. Because that's what, if you remember like the Avengers 1, 2, 3, even 3. Yeah. Like we <laughs> felt like we grew up with these characters, even though we would, we didn't, but we felt like we yeah. had really grown up with Cap. Like we understood his character. We knew exactly how he yeah. would think about certain things. Like, it just meant so much more to us. Right. Now it's, it's just like we're oversaturated with characters. Yeah, because it's, it's ironic, but you know, we we looked, we used to look at DC, the DCU, and say, you know, they rushed to do Justice League, and we were we 
cited that as a that's a big mistake because she didn't give us the time to get to know the characters properly mm. um and that's what marvel were getting right but now it just seems like oh it's just too much now <clears throat> yeah like you're saying there's just there's too many like characters that are like okay they're okay but they're not, really the big, they're not the big kitters kind of thing, you know. Yeah. They're not like, and then you know, yeah. like he was talking about, was it eighty years worth of comics to draw on? And I was just like, oh man, like, yeah, is yeah. it? Is this getting? <laughs> is this getting too much now? Who else is they going to bring in now? Um, but I guess we'll see. What when they do Fantastic Four and X Men? I'm sure that will, hopefully, fingers crossed, that will revive things. Yeah. Uh, have you been hearing about Blade? What's happening with Blade? Oh, God, no. What's going on? Uh, well, the stories are going around. That, you know, they, they fired the director and the writer. Now they've got a new writer. They're doing more rewrites again. <coughs> They're still not happy with it. Even Mahershala Ali's getting very... Oh, he's getting, getting old, for one. Old, but he's also get He's very disappointed that he feels like he should be getting better treatment being that he's going to be leaving as, as in as in his his thoughts and opinions and his di like creative direction should yeah, be I mean, more I think it more in. The, I guess more his status as an actor you know he's a two time Oscar winner <clears throat> and he's just getting missed about um, yeah and it sounds like they've got a new draft uh, with the last, the problem with the last one apparently was that there wasn't enough action scenes. It was just like two, and there was a storyline involving. Actually, I don't want to say it because, uh, but then this one is now they've submitted it, but it's very short. I think it would just be enough to cover maybe an hour and a half movie, which you think okay. is okay. That's not bad. Then uh, not every movie has to be like two and a half hours or something like that. But you think, well, well how much have they chopped out? How much is vital? Yeah, I don't know. Man. Do. It's all a bit of a mess. Uh, Captain the Marvels is also a bit of a mess at the moment as well. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm not uh, looking forward to that. Apparently, there've been quite a few uh, sort of screeners, which have all been getting really bad reactions. Um, so they're also trying to rush and rewrite things, trying to sort that out. That's also a mess. Uh, apparently Brie Larson is not happy that she, <laughs> that that she, to... yeah I mean like you can't, I kind of, kind of see her viewpoint in the sense that she agreed to be this character and she, yeah. you know Captain Marvel was supposed to be like the character that was going to lead the supposed to be the big character in Marvel comics be, be a big part of the MCU yeah and she's now having to share screen time with Monica Rambeau and Kamala Khan. <clears throat> um, so apparently she's not particularly happy about that. Um, so it's, what is it's she... all a mess. It's all she a wants a Captain, a Marvel, oh, Ca Captain Marvel 2 is what she wants, right? Essentially, yeah. I guess she felt that she... Yeah, she wanted her own sequel, not having to share the... Share. I mean, this is all... Again, this is all like speculate. Well, pe what people are saying. Insiders... I see yeah. air quotes are saying um, but apparently all the screeners and all the they've been you know it's been pushed back so many times because there's oh, yeah. still refilming scenes um, alright I mean the conclusion here for the listeners is that Marvel's in a bit of a shit store DC are there's a, a bit of light at the end of the tunnel <laughs> potential I know Zack yeah, Snyder's yeah, yeah. teasing a lot of his Snyderverse stuff <clears throat> coming SnyderCon yeah stuff just, coming up it could be a prequel i was hearing it's so, weird he um he 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 made a tweet uh, yeah. about 12 hours ago <clears throat> saying uh super excited for an incredible three-day event um yeah. look to, uh just talking about like book your tickets or something like that right. thanks for thanks to warner brothers for support and making this all happen and he put a poster like an image yeah. saying a uh, picture of superman as a statue uh, it's all black and white and it says right. uh, 10 years of heroes three epic movies one man's vision and then it said Snyderverse trilogy in gold writing at the bottom I don't even know what that means 
10 years of heroes okay so his universe was 10 years old before it stopped and then three epic movies like what does that mean three epic movies is he just talking about man of steel uh, batman vs superman and then justice league and then one man's vision seems so i've heard speculation that they're talking about exploring more of you know like superman and like dark side well that's what everyone wants isn't it from that it was like i'm not a Snyderverse fan by the way just, yeah just disclaimer here i'm not actually a Snyderverse fan yeah um, <clears throat> but yeah that, i mean that's so i guess this is another thing for dc fans to be excited about this is dc are doing things right and at the moment um, well on getting paper. that hype <laughs> yeah, well, they're getting a the hype. The hype out. is the yeah, hype yeah, is yeah, half yeah. the half the battle, isn't it? Just getting people excited because that's what draws draws the attention. Um, talking about films, did you Better. read that the? Uh, I have a little tidbit here. It was the um, Writers Guild of America? <clears throat> okay, uh, <clears throat> they they said that they've changed one of their laws, which will allow um, the use. Um, of AI screenwriting with, oh, with really? limitations. Yeah, with limitations. So the way it works is like the writers, they will write their script, write their their screenplays. Okay. And they'll um, run it through AI to. They can out. run it through AI um, to help, uh, you know, adjust or correct or help, you know, I guess decorate part of their writing. And when they do that, they don't actually, the writers themselves don't have to credit anyone or even credit the software or the program that they used. It still just goes under their name as this person wrote this. Oh, really? Yeah. So there's a limitation to it, but I don't know how they go about um, screening for those limitations, like how much of this is AI or whatever. Interesting. But crazy world we're living in with this AI, man. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was talking to a friend of mine uh, he's also a graphic designer, and he was talking about yeah. It basically, was talking about AI. Like I hadn't really played around with it, but he was showing me what it can do. Uh, and obviously, it can do some amazing stuff. But the, the fact that it, it at the this at this moment in time, <laughs> um, it was taking you know like some artists have signature. Um, they're not sig signature things that they include in their artwork. So I don't know, for example, like a Michael Turner or a Jim Lee. Like if you saw a Jim Lee drawing, yeah, you would know it's a Jim Lee drawing. Yeah, but like an AI uh, art generator could take references from a Jim Lee drawing, but it doesn't have to credit them. And so I mean, it was, it was like stealing from other artists essentially, without giving right, them okay. any credit, um, and then you have stuff. I'm sure we both know professional illustrators and things like yeah. that. And obviously for them, that's a big thing because it's like you're taking my artwork. You're not giving me any credit for it. I'm not being compensated for it, but it's being passed off by someone else as their art, yeah. essentially, because they've just, they've just done it as an AI filter. Um, and apparently, the, like you say, you said, I think Adobe have now created because we were all talking about our ai being like terrible for the industry but then i was looking at it like well it can help with it can be a tool like it shouldn't be the whole you know what i mean it's like you could use maybe you could use ai to generate a background for example yeah but the actual figures and drawings that you've done should be your should be your work kind of thing well this this is it so right like it. it with every tool there's no such thing as a bad tool it's just bad people bad what well, bad intents but bad examples of using the tool right so yeah um ai like ai art ai you know chat gbt and all of that stuff they're all yeah. really cool stuff and they're really i wouldn't say it's bad yeah. but we as we all know humans will end up abusing it and you know you can see it in art um people using ai art a lot um are trying to pass it off as their own all right um all right. Same with writing, um, kids trying to use it to do question, you know, homework, essays, um, and stuff like essays and stuff. Yeah, and I and it's there was a big upgrade to ChatGPT um, last week, 
which gives it like even more power. It's ridiculous, and it it connects. It you can use plugins with it now. Um, so some plugins are like browser plugins, so it can actually access the internet live as you're asking it a question. Uh, so if you're wow. like, oh, show me uh, the last three episodes of what the flip podcasts, yeah. it could actually access that and um give you the link to it or and it will kind of give its own little you know description and stuff like that and it's 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 just growing more and more and i think it's got the use of image scanning as well and video scanning so you could post an image in there yeah and then say can you find me some similar images of this and then uh it will do it for you kind of like google image search right right but um, obviously with an AI next to it as well. So could you find me images of this, but, it, you know, excluding, you know, uh, the color red or whatever or something like that. And then it will give you like a, a you know, little things like that. So it's, it's getting more and more powerful each each and every yeah. like, few months. So it's just, I, I'm so, I'm curious but scared uh, <laughs> where it's going to be yeah, in the next year or two. Was, yeah, because my mate just, he mentioned that Adobe have now announced, um, I think it's a program called Firefly, which is a new AI generator that pulls arts from its own image bank. But apparently they're compensating artists. So it's kind of making it more ethical right. for the artist. So sounds like the industry is moving towards that way where they're gonna they're embracing AI. Yeah. But yeah, let's make sure that artists are not being like plagiarized or just be compensated for their work essentially uh, yeah it'd be like someone taking your work for it. I know you know you've seen you post some of your illustrations yeah yeah it'd be like someone taking your stuff not giving you any credit yeah selling it as a like, like, like an NFT or something like that <laughs> it's like Will or something like money doing that <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then like not getting any credit or any money for it at yeah. all which I think it's just, <laughs> it's just really wrong <laughs> yeah, it's really just, wrong uh, yeah. Did I tell you funny... that story about, oh, sorry, about Louis at uni where he, the no, um, but... the guy um, copied his work, his final project, final oh, major project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me just say it again just for listeners that might not have heard it. Um, <laughs> so we had a final major project, you know, all the animators would, you know, fight, you know, make their own project and it would be like a three, four months uh, big thing that they would have to invest in. Um, and Louis's one was <laughs> was this really weird, like it was like an anime esque animation based on someone going on a train, like a subway or a tube or something. And they there's no chairs, so everyone's standing up. And then someone gets up to get off the train, and there's um there's an empty seat, but there's two people looking at the empty seat, and it's kind of like a, sh- a standoff of who's gonna sit on the oh, empty seat. Okay, okay. And I don't remember why, but it ends up in a standoff being with guns. And then, like, someone shoots someone or something. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, so he was doing it. And he was doing it all, like, sketches. So he would actually, he was, like, hand-drawn. So he was just doing it sketches, sketch it. And he must have left, like, a wad of, like, I don't know, 200 pages of sketches. Um, frames, sorry. Like, in the studio when he went okay. home. Yeah, yeah. And then he came back and like, he was like, I remember he was like, oh, there it is. I bloody forgot these. Like, blah, blah, blah. Right. So he like put them in his bag or whatever. And then like the next month when we were seeing everyone's work, right. this guy called James, this ginger guy called James, yeah. he showed his work first. Oh, and no, it was this. the exact same frame by frame thing as Louis. <laughs> oh my God. The only <laughs> difference was, was that Louis never really colored his in. But James actually coloured his in, like, with shading and colouring and stuff like that. So his one uh, ended up looking better. And the thing, the and thing is, thing. The, the, the other funny thing is, James isn't a drawer, so he can't really draw anime or anything like that. Right, right. Um, he was good at animating, but he wasn't really a drawer. He He's more like a Pixar style oh, okay. stylist. But his work was all <laughs> anime based, like, Louis. <laughs> so, and Louis was like... And the t- he, he, there was no punishment. The teacher just graded them, graded Louis uh, l- a lower mark. Oh my god! Um, it must have been fuming. And that was that. Yeah, it was a uh, pretty hilarious. Like when you look back at it. Oh, but that's so blatant though to do it in front of. Like he knew what he was doing. Like he knew. Yeah, he just... and things they're they're close. They weren't close mates, but they were the equivalent of like. 
Um, equivalent of like me and, uh, I don't know, me and, let's say, me and Nate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your brethren. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Your boy. Shout out to Nate. <laughs> yeah, your boy, Nate. <laughs> but it was like, they're probably a little bit closer than that. So it wasn't like they were mates or anything. Right, but like, right. Yeah, it was Mate, so bad. So disrespectful, though, man. I would be, oh, I'd be fuming. So bad. How did he get away with it? I don't know. The teachers just didn't care. I think one of the teachers was borderline racist, to be, to be honest. Wow. <laughs> to be, wow. Yeah, because he had, um, I think he got put on a leaf because of some racist... Really? Uh, yeah, some complaints. What's he hell? <laughs> that he hated Prince. He disliked me. He disliked Louis. Basically, he disliked everyone who was black in the class. And then everyone oh, else wow. was like, he was fine. It was really weird because I was actually quite a polite person. Um, and I never, I wasn't like I was procrastinating. I actually worked really hard. Yeah. I just yeah. sat with Louis and Prince, who were both black. <laughs> I just sat with different <laughs> cars. So it ended he up. He said, um, oh, he hated Prince. I was like, what? The artist? <laughs> <laughs> no, my mate Prince. Um, yeah. He said to me once, he said to me, um, no, no, he said to Prince, he says, like when we had to show him like our portfolio and stuff like that and say like which is what what do we want to do next year because this was like a foundation diploma that we yeah. did before we did yeah. our, our our degree and we all said we want to go into animation and he said to prince um you're only good at drawing naked men with swords <laughs> <laughs> because prince always used to draw like do sketches of like topless like hench anime figures like with massive swords <laughs> and then he said to me he said, all I care about is gym and girls. Um, and I would never make it as an animator. Oh, wow. Um, Seriously? Yeah. And Louis, I don't think he even gave like a, a future talk with because he, Louis was just too, like, Louis would just keep talking like rubbish. Louis have a comeback for every little thing, but yeah. it was just like a, <laughs> right. so he just, he never really bothered him. He kind of like ignored him. Oh, and that's like, crazy. Wow. Like, yeah. Pretty, pretty, I said this one guy, which is like the greatest quote, the greatest line for a teacher to a pupil. Um, so this one guy is called Raph, and he was like in a year above us, and he he was black as well. Uh, and he was showing him his portfolio, and Raph was all right; he had some good work. And he said, "Ah, oh, Raph, brilliant! You know what the best thing I like about your portfolio is?" Raph was like getting all hyped because he thought the teacher liked his work and stuff. <laughs> right? Yeah. He goes, "Oh no, what? What?" He goes, "The best thing about your portfolio is the folder that it's in." <laughs> then... that's savage and that was literally that, and, and people heard it and that was it and he just walked the teacher just walked away and just like carried on like just going around the class talking to other my people God. and it was just like oh, wow. no wonder he got and, like let go man me and Prince were like crying like for days <laughs> <'Cause>, like... <laughs> I mean you got uh, the savagery of it is hilarious but at the same time so it's savage. Just, like wow yeah, it was so bad. So bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. Um, what, how are you doing for time? Do we need to wrap up? Uh, no, I can keep going. All right, let's, just, let's, do another, let's do another 10 minutes. I think that'll be all right. Um, what, what, other, what other things have we got? Um, for the listeners, um, there's been a rebranding of the, of the podcast. You can check it out on whattheflippodcast.com. Um I think it's quite a cool branding now um, that I got. Um, there's going to be, we're going to be going back to our original recording schedules next month at some point, which means, all that means for the listeners is that we should be able to get all of us together on a podcast a lot more, me, you, Louis, and Will together, um, which would mean we're able to do more flipping outs, tournament episodes again, um, nice. mystery episodes stuff like that have you have you have you um i've really missed the tournament episodes mark have you thought of any like cool tournament type things because i think uh, i've got a list that i'm not gonna reveal now but i've got a list of ones <laughs> that are, like would be really cool uh no i haven't really thought about it i think it's just been i think just like you said circumstances have dictated that we just do like whichever kind of episodes we can fit in at the moment yeah at the moment um but yeah it would be fun to do more of those those tournaments because it's always fun to get to hear everyone's like viewpoints on things yeah 
and the co- the cartoon theme song tournament i think is our best ever um best ever uh, uh, episode that we've done on the show in terms of like viewership oh amazing yeah that's got like thousands of views that one and this um best cartoon theme song ever and that, that i think that was one of my favorite episodes yeah that was really fun like especially to like louis was just so on it <laughs> which was great <laughs> um, yeah, was he just, was on fire that episode it was just really really fun to like A to reminisce but then also B to hit nuance like what everyone brought to the table in terms of what they liked and what yeah what, it's jokes what... and I think listeners if, you, if you've if you got certain tournaments that you think we should do um, please write into us contact at whattheflippodcast.com or just go to the whattheflippodcast.com and you can you can submit the forms there but um yeah like this i think some of my favorite episodes have been the tournament ones although they don't necessarily always translate best as a podcast but i think for us it's really fun to do yeah um, i think it's um like you said it's, it's always good to just bounce off each other and yeah it kind of sparks off things that are like oh yeah i remember this or oh, i didn't think about that or i didn't look at it this way um, yeah, <clears throat> it's just always fun to look at things that that shape our us as people and our childhoods and growing up and stuff like that. I think that's always great. I might do ones like best X Men character, like X Men hero character, or like kind of more specific ones that are, you know have a shorter pool of things and stuff like that. But I've got a list, so I've got some really cool ones. And same with the mystery episodes. I know Mark, you've been on a couple. I don't think you've been on ones with more than just me and you have you been on ones with like me you and will i think i've been on like one one or two with will oh okay i think okay. never never yeah, i've got, I've got a couple of good ones yeah yeah a couple of good ones that i want i want to get through um, yeah that'd be fun that's always fun to listen to those, to those yeah ones. because it's just so because it's like something different it's good and, and they, they they do pretty well as well yeah <laughs> um i think We'll wrap it up for today. Um, I gotta get back to work, but yeah, next month is gonna be good. I think probably mid next month. Um, I'll be good. But guys, thanks for listening. As always, head over to whattheflippodcast.com. Get access to all of our exclusive content from videos, news updates, show notes, online episodes, and ways to interact with us. We can suggest topics, ask questions, and more. And with that, I've been Alex. I've been Marky Mark, and we're out. Peace.